Hi, I'm Alex Howard, and I'm here with Julia Alderman from the nutrition team at the clinic. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the role of emotions in ME, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and that group of illnesses, but specifically from a biomedical perspective. So we've done quite a few videos in the past with the psychology team talking about you know, why emotions are important and how we work with them and that kind of thing. But we thought it'd be really interesting from a more biomedical perspective to talk about what are the actual ways that the, what we feel and what we think actually affects us biochemically. So to answer those questions, we've got Julia Alderman. So hi, Julia. Hi. Um, and maybe the first question, Julia, to start off with would be, when we experience emotions, what are some of the changes that take place in our body? So how do they actually, actually biochemically affect us? Okay, well, when we experience emotions, there's been a lot of research to show that it's actually da down to molecules called peptides. And these peptides were first discovered in the brain, so often referred to as neuropeptides. But they've since been found also throughout the body um, in, in different organs. And the way peptides work is they bind to very specific receptors and when, when the peptide fits its receptor, then that can then de lead to a cascade of signaling and in information flow inside the cell. And the research shows that these neuropeptides and their receptors are um, in very high concentrations in parts of the brain to do with emotion, so in the, in the limbic system, for example. Um, but that we also have them throughout the body as well. So it seems to be this flow of peptides from the brain and the body and the body and brain. So it's a, a, a two-way flow that is responsible for how, how we actually feel and experience emotions. So it's almost like if we have a certain emotional response or emotional reaction that that has to be communicated biologically to our body of how we feel and that this is the process by which that happens. Exactly, and I mean, we, we often use terms such as your gut feelings, and it, it's true to say that there's a high number of these neuropeptide receptors in the gut in, in, in the same way that there is in the brain. Well, I think one of the things that's really interesting, that I think a lot of people probably watching this are probably reasonably aware of the, the impact of their um, of their mental and emotional state on their physical health because they will have had experiences, for example, of being very stressed about something and then feeling a certain way afterwards. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I remember um, um, I always see these videos to kind of to confess to things in my own physical health. But I remember one of the things that I um, was, was a big factor for me as part of my um, my illness, my recovery, was I used to get a lot of constipation. And one of the things that I noticed was that whenever I went away from home, I would get constipated. And it was, you know, for a while I was like, maybe it's just the food, but I realised I could be eating exactly the same food, but there was some way of that lack, lack of feeling safe, or that lack of feeling in my own environment, especially because I was ill and I felt vulnerable all of the time, that translated into my physical state and my body would have a certain yeah. response to it. So it almost seems to me that the neuropeptide is almost like the translator of how we translate what we think and what we feel into something that's, that, that, that's emotional. Exactly. You yeah. know, and I know that there's, there's quite a few different studies that have been done which demonstrate this and, mm -hmm. and which show this. And maybe it's worth talking about a few of those to give people a bit of a, a, bit of a feel for how this actually can work. Yeah, I mean, one, one good study that's been done has been on thirst and looking at thirst as an altered mood state. And they've, they've done studies where, for example, they've taken the peptide called angiotensin and put that on a rat's brain and when the angiotensin reaches the receptors that, that are specific for the peptide then the rat will want to drink and so it, it, it wants water so no matter how much water the rat has had it's going to want more and there are the same correlations in the kidney and the lungs too so there are angiotensin receptors in the kidney which will help to preserve water loss so less water is lost in, in the urine and likewise in the lung when the angi angiotensin binds to the angiotensin receptors in the lung 
then the system will work to reduce the amount of water vapour that, that's lost th through the breath. So the whole system is really working towards that same goal of increasing water. So it's almost like everything that we think and everything that we feel is being translated into behaviours and actions and activities on a cellular level within the body to, exactly. just to decide you know, how we're going to feel, how we're going to respond, what we should do, what we should not do, both in terms of our behaviour in the world but also in terms of how our body's going to respond to it. Yeah, and in, in fact there's also been research um, on the effect on the immune system and so a lot of viruses can actually use these neuropeptide receptors to enter the cells and so that there's an argument that if you have a lot of a specific neuropeptide there's going to be more competition for the vi for the virus making it harder to actually get into into the cell so with the common cold that actually uses the receptor for noradrenaline um, and generally people that are depressed have slightly lower levels whereas if someone is in a happier state they're going to have slight, slightly more so therefore you know you, you could say if, if you're generally of higher spirits then your immune system is going to be supported and you'll be less less likely to succumb to infection. Because I know that, that, that there's also been quite a few studies that have been done um, for example with students around exam time where they when they're more stressed they're more likely to catch colds and flus and, and that kind of thing. So there's exactly. lots of different ways that it can relate to the immune system and, 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 and that kind of thing. And I know that there's another area that I just wanted just to uh, briefly talk about as well where if we have a lot of emotion stored in the body and kind of what we mean kind of psychologically by that is that if we've gone through certain experiences in our lives where we weren't able to process what happened, you know, mm -hmm. so say for example, we've gone through a divorce and we've had all kinds of anger and, and sadness and loneliness and everything else that's there, and it was just too much to feel it, like it was just too overwhelming, so we found a way to disconnect from it. And that way to disconnect from it could be anything from just pushing ourselves to work to just not feeling anything. There's lots of, obviously, it's a whole video in itself, lots of coping strategies of how we disconnect emotionally. But that emotion has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so when it's stored in the body, I know that also can have a big impact, kind of physiologically. Yeah. And looking at the neuropeptide model, when emotions are stored, it can be that the neuropeptides actually couple to the receptor and cause a change in, in the receptor on a cellular level. And the, bo the body has to work very hard to prevent the emotion from actually coming up, up to consciousness. Um, so the body works hard in, in, in many ways to protect us from an emotion that we don't want to feel, but it's depleting the body's reserves to be doing that. Exactly, because it will be disrupting the, the natural peptide flow, but in order to prevent kind of an information overload, the, cor the cortex is quite selective as to what information it actually allows up. So there's this kind of con constant battle where the emotion wants to be expressed, but it's also being being suppressed back down as well. And I guess also, just as you know, we mentioned about the role of um, of the gut and digestion, that can obviously be, you know, a major part of this as well. The people kind of talk about, you know, they've got a gut feeling or a kind of instinct yeah, around exactly. it, you know, and it's it's almost like, you know, if if the head is the um, the seat of our kind of our thoughts, then really the gut is the seat of our emotions and our feelings, and that's where things tend to sit. And maybe it's just worth talking a little bit about the relationship there as well. Yeah, well, d just like you say, the the body and particularly the gut do does have a very high level of neuropeptide receptors and it works both ways so if, if you look at the term dyspeptic which is often used for poor, poor digestion but it also means someone who is kind of grouchy and so it works both ways if you're feeling grouchy your digestion will will be slightly less efficient and vice, vice versa so if you're digestion is not great, then your mood will also alter as a result. Well, I think if anyone who's watching this has experienced um, brain fog, which I experience an awful lot of, then they'll know that it's just incredibly difficult to feel excited about anything in life when your brain just kind of feels, almost like, you know, I've heard it described like a peptide fog where it's just, there's all of that stuff that's in there in your head. So then it makes you feel more grouchy, 
But of course, that then has an impact on your digestion because your whole system is more tense and more stressed. And so, as you say, it's like, it's like a loop that just kind of exactly. feeds itself. Um, and I think one of the things which can be really helpful with this, and one of the reasons for doing the video, is that the more that people understand this process, the more hopefully they can realize that they're not going mad. You know, that, that, that our emotions significantly impact on Absolutely. our body. Yeah. And there are, you know, there are ways, obviously, psychologically to work with that but also from a nutritional perspective to work with the imbalances and that kind of thing as well to yeah. support somebody in you know, overcoming these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Julia, for, for being here. Hopefully that's kind of sparked some interest and um, helped to understand, as I say, more about this because I think it, in many ways it's a, it's a really misunderstood area where people think, well, you know, it's just psychological, you know, for example, if they're in an emotional state. And it may be that the psychology is triggering something, but there's real biochemistry that's happening as well. Um, so if you want to find out more about this, then obviously you can order a free information pack and then to book a free 15 minute chat where you can chat with either someone from the psychology team or Julia one of the nutrition team to find out more about how this may be related to you and your recovery. So thanks for watching.